Hey everyone, uh, this is Jake and I'm here with Matthew Porter um, for all of the other Home Gym Junkie listeners. That is AKA Porter Fizz Ed on Instagram, um, DIY extraordinaire. We are here to chat about his home gym story and then projects and, and maybe touch on what he has going on in the future. Um, thank you for hopping on, Matthew. Um, just to start us off, would you mind giving us a 30 second to minute intro of who you are? I'm Matthew Porter, uh, AKA Porter Phys Ed. Um, I've been doing home gym stuff for like a long time. I am currently a PE teacher and been doing that for 10 years. Um, so I've been doing fitness and doing other things, I mean, very adjacent to fitness with sports for a long, long time. Uh, I currently live in Brandon, Florida with my wife, and she has graciously allowed me to uh, <laughs> take the garage over so I can uh, have uh, the, like the home gym in there. Our only stipulation is I have to give her space uh, if there's a hurricane in Florida. She has to be able to fit her car in here, um, right? which I, she can fit it, but it's, it's close. <laughs> that's, fa that's fair. Um, so you said you've had it forever. Do you remember how many years ago uh, that uh, was? Yeah. And then, yeah. And then what did it look like or how did you yeah, start the, it? I should say. Yeah. In the very beginning, I actually, um, me and uh, my wife, we, she was my girlfriend at the time. We moved into my best friend's house and he had just gone through a, uh, like bad breakup and uh, divorce. And he basically wanted to have, to have somebody live with them. And we hopped on, he was giving us a really great rate, like nice cheap rate for rent and everything. Uh, and he wanted to get his home gym started, and that's kind of where we started. It was a Titan T2 rack. Um, my other buddy had a set of plates from when he was in high school that we literally bit, like dug out of the ground, uh, refurbished them, got them all painted up, and we're using that. Uh, and that, we were there for a year, and then we moved into a townhome, and then it was a one-car garage with the limitation of still having to fit a a car in there so really tight everything was like literally millimeters of like i'm measuring making sure the car will fit and everything um slowly started to grow uh grow getting everything up on the wall was kind of my solution to trying to get as much stuff in there as i possibly could um and now we're currently at uh, a brand new where we currently live uh, we have a two-car garage uh, which and it's a very big two-car garage too so we have a lot more space um, I have upgraded quite a few things and like I added tons of uh, new equipment. I can see behind me have like a wall of bars back there. Mm -hmm. it, I'm still in the two by two uh, ecosystem, but I have the X2, which is a much more sturdy rack, but the Titan discontinued it, which is unfortunate for me. But I, since gotcha. it's so sturdy, I basically just modify everything to make it work. All right. Um, so when did you do your first DIY project? Um, I don't know if you count the refurbishing of the weights as a DIY project, but that kind of is where it started, but that was more of a necessity because being a teacher, I mean, money is never, uh, really something that we have. <laughs> so we have to find ways, <laughs> find ways to, um, get the equipment, find the different things and make it work. Uh, so my, all my equipment, um, in the beginning was, I mean, like luckily enough, uh, whenever my buddy moved, he basically like, gave me all of this stuff because he didn't want to do, um, take it with his travel when he went to North Carolina. So I kind of lucked into that. Um, but my first big uh, project that I did was, um, kind of two, I was kind of doing at the same time was a deadlift or actually three, a deadlift platform, a, uh, weight tree, and then a deadlift jack. So all made out of wood. Um, I fancied up the, um, deadlift jack uh, my brother helped me get some cnc parts to kind of reinforce it with some aluminum but that's kind of where it started as far as like the different doi projects it's kind of for most people that's I mean, at least for the platform that's kind of where it starts and yeah for some it'll keep going and other times that's where it just starts and ends and how many would you say you've completed since oh it's a lot i'm, I'm probably 30 plus um, Dang. Okay. Yeah. I mean, the, the biggest thing I'm trying to, I don't have the space and a lot of machines won't fit for my kind of, um, parameters, like what I have for my garage gym. So I have to 
kind of look at something and like, how can I make that thing for my home gym without buying this giant piece of equipment? Right. Um, most of them had like in the beginning it was a lot of wood projects where my brother would help me with the, the woodworking. Cause he's got a bit, um, better shot for that processing. Um, and then eventually he, he had got a welder and I borrowed the welder and, uh, not knowing, I didn't realize he only had it for two weeks and then he let, told me I could borrow it. And then I kept it for like eight months. <laughs> so, uh, had lots of projects, got really good at welding. Um, well, I got much, much better at welding. I'm not saying I'm good at welding, but my stuff is like really strong. Um, and finally got my own welder. Uh, but right when you can start manipulating metal, like kind of like the world opens up all these different ideas that you could have. Got it. Uh, so I'll, we'll, we'll touch on the bells of steel, uh, cable tower here in a minute, but, um, I'd love to hear like, what are some of your favorite DIY projects you did uh, other than the bells of steel one um, or the most useful, I should say, or favorite. Yeah. Um, right now it would be my, um, kind of like a chest support pad that I've made. Um, it's very similar to like Darko's Thresher pad, but mm -hmm. all made out of wood and has a couple, and he has way more options, but a couple different adjustment points, but it goes onto a spotter arm. Um, I know I've, uh, that's kind of where I started was like a play. I have, I have, I'm borrowing Kyle's right here. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, so mine is, um, it's all plywood and it's, uh, so it's not as, like that one is, I mean, that's two by four, so his is way, I mean, it's gonna be a little heavier. I was trying to find, make something that was gonna be strong, but smaller, uh -huh. uh, but also having the ability to attach on to spotter arms. I know I've suggested in the past, okay. like, yeah. like when I know y'all are asking for like different ideas of like equipment companies to make things. And that was something I was like, why don't we use these holes on, on the spotter arms and that's kind of my favorite because i can use it as a chest support pad i can use it as a seat for my like lap pull down uh -huh. uh, items uh if i wanted to do excuse me i wanted to do like seal rows you can use that as well yep for sure i i love that piece um how about um just would love to hear along your home gym journey uh do you have any uh favorite equipment purchases that you've, uh, per you know, you met, you've mentioned, you've kind of built it out in a uh, budget friendly way. You've done a lot of DIY projects, any specific products that you've really appreciated their overall value and use? Yeah, definitely. Um, I, I look for things where I can do as many things as possible. So like, I want something that's versatile that can kind of just kind of go across the gamut of like all these different options. Um, and then, a piece that I was waiting forever on, I was one of the, uh, tried to get on the pre-order right away was the, uh, rep fitness open trap bar, uh, just because it can do so many different things. And that design that they have where you can squat with it, you can do, um, uh, with the, oh, they also with the open, uh, ended design, uh, deadlifts, obviously, but mm -hmm. it's one where I'm like, I use it regularly. Um, it, it is one that's a, has a little bit more expensive than something I usually buy. Mm -hmm but it was one like it's cheap enough and then the alternatives that are out there are to me it's like no comparison um i haven't got a chance to use the giant one yet and that one looks fairly similar mm -hmm. uh, but i wasn't familiar with that one when i was like looking in so like the rep fitness one right now is my kind of like my favorite option besides the the bells towers the and it's its gotcha. own gotcha thing. yes um and then before we get to the Bell's Tower as well, purchase regrets. It's it's hard to say purchase regrets because it's like now that I like can manipulate the metal, um, <laughs> I've turned those items that were like a mistake into something completely different. Um, oh, <laughs> yeah, like um, I have a uh, it was a Titan step up attachment that went through my uh, X2 rack mm -hmm. and I basically took it completely apart, uh, essentially just destroyed the thing. And then I made it into a, um, a slam board. Oh. <laughs> uh, 
Yeah, but that one, nice. like, when I first had, when I first had it, I'm like, this is thing is super heavy. It's in the way all the time. I tried to sell it multiple times. No one wanted it, and yeah. it was really just sitting in the corner. And then when I finally realized, like, oh, I could just rip this thing apart and make something out of else out of it. Um, but I think right now my only other one would be my wheels that I have they just kind of hang on the wall and yeah start They're... more of a decoration <laughs> right <laughs> they are cool all right mm -hmm. uh tell me about so I'd love to hear the bells of steel cable tower story like um number one uh did you buy it knowing you were going to make these adjustments and then number two just give a quick rundown of what you've done with it Okay. Um, the I mean the tower is one where I, I like the like the design because I I thought that it had potential to do some different things with it. I was thinking more of you could attach like their steel rope had, had to it, and they had some other attachments. I didn't think that I was going to make anything for gotcha. it. I was like, oh, that was super cool. I could I could do cable like uh, uh, like kind of steel rows and things like that. And when I actually went to go purchase that item, they, they actually were current, currently out of stock for that mm. item and I, and I haven't purchased it since. Um, but when it came in, having it, initially I actually had two of them because I was trying to make it where it could be a cable stack and I wanted it to be like an additional squat rack over to the side. Um, and then I found, because I bought two plate loaded uh, options, uh, I just wasn't going to use both of them. I I would go load, I, when I load one up, uh, one side up, I never wanted to load the other side up. I'm like, this is like, yeah. super annoying. Um, and then uh, I went ahead and sold the, that one, I upgraded the pulley wheels, uh, and then started to like dabble in like what I could do. Um, and then you're saying to all the different attachments of what all the things I've done to it. Mm -hmm. So, um, I, I, mean, I, I mean, how many I actually have? It's all right if you miss one or two. Uh, I, yeah, no, I have like six or seven different things that I've done for the Bell's Tower. The first one was kind of an accident. I decided I found um, an old bench on Facebook Marketplace that had like a preacher curl attachment and a leg curl attachment. And my idea was I could hook it to my rack and use it, use plates on it, not the cable tower at all not realizing that if I just take the squat, like the um, safety spotter arms and attach it that way, you could just use the same exact bracket and attach cables to it. Um, mm -hmm. But play with that. I didn't like the force curve of the uh, plates on it. It just, it just didn't feel exactly the way I wanted to. Um, and then just played around, hooked it up onto the Bell's Tower. And then that gave me a um, leg extension um, it works really well as a leg extension, um, leg curl, it can work, but it's like one leg at a time. It, it's a little clunky in that fashion, but for a leg extension, it works fantastic. Uh -huh. Um, the next one was the preacher curl. It uses the same bracket to attach the like aluminum, uh, CNC bracket that, we, um, I built and pop goes on. That one actually is probably my favorite one used just because it feels so good. Um, it's a little harder, like, yeah, it's hard to find those, those pieces. I just kind of happened to get it and it was essentially $10 on Facebook Marketplace. Somebody wanted to just trash it. Um, and then the next thing that I started working on was a, um, a belt squat attachment. And my initial idea was to bolt it to the floor and have it where it has a, a bracket that would be removable that you could put on, put it off. And then to start from the top, I actually welded together these um, custom hitch pins that have an eye at the end of them. And then using uh, sailing carabiners, you can use it as a quick release from the top. So you can load up, I mean, all the way up to the max capacity of the Bell's Tower. Um, I think that's 330. But you can load that up all from the top. So you don't have to start from the bottom of the movement, which is not fun to do for a Bell Squad at all. Right. Um, that was my initial one. I mean, started sharing that a little bit. Um, granted, the leg extension, um, Kyle, uh, Kaizen uh, DIY, he, I shared it with him. He wanted to kind of share it, and that kind of got me to sharing more of my 
DIY ideas, seeing how people are like really interested in the different things. Um, before I was kind of just making it all on my own and just kind of yeah doing it. It's just like hey, it's just a I'm making making it for myself, not really making it to do anything else with it. Um, and then the next thing I wanted to do, I wanted to get the lap pull down. Um, and then the lap pull down, just kind of racking my brain. How can it get? Because they're a little short to get a lap pull down. And then the angle of the pull is more of a of like a forty five degree angle if you're sitting down at a bench, mm-hmm. and you bottom out at the top for most people. Um, so I have I had some um, basically uh, leg uh, stability feet just laying around. That was a per um, a couple other purchases that were initially a mistake. Uh-huh. And I just kept them and just started looking at it and walked over to the Bell's Tower, flipped it upside down, and it was like these holes line up. <laughs> and then uh, once I saw the holes lined up, started playing around with different ways I could um, attach it together. Uh, so I welded on some uh, pulley brackets and just started playing around with different options. Uh, the leg holder option that I had was the next thing I kind of worked on. Because I was using um, one that I kind of just took off of a bench and modified to make it work, but it was uh, had a very big gap, so it was very wobbly, didn't didn't fit fit right, um, and then I was able to kind of solve that solution with kind of making my own T design um, uh, leg holder that just bolts in with one pin, so super easy to connect and disconnect. Mm-hmm. Um, what is the next? The next one would be the fly machine. And uh, that was something that I was posting with, kind of messaging back and forth with a couple people on Instagram that do some other DIY projects or had been like commenting on other stuff. Um, same thing, I, because I'm using those stabilizer feet, they have the holes on the side, which allows more mounting points to the tower itself. I realized I can just mount that same thing. Mm-hmm. And somebody mentioned once I showed them that I, what I was ideally what I was going to do with two other stabilizers that would be making it where it was attached at the top to be able to do flies. They mentioned, oh, now you need to make it. Now you need to make the arms move. Mm-hmm. And I'm one where like if I get the idea in my head, I have to get it out of my head. If that makes sense at all. Yeah. Like I have to at least try to make it become a reality. Um, and then I actually just posted that um, recently about the yeah. um, the fly arms where they can articulate up and down, so you can do different presses from like lower angles, higher angles. Um, the next one would be a um, another belt squat attachment because uh, the first one I had to bolt to the ground, and for a lot of people, like, this is where I'm starting to get the idea. Like I wanted to maybe sell things, and so I'm trying to find a ways. So how can I make it? where it's more accessible to other people because adding another hole into your concrete is that's a big sell to anybody like you kind of have to like really commit Mm -hmm. to it's going to be right there and it's going to be a little bit in the way because it jets out makes the footprint a little bit bigger Mm -hmm. um and i end up having these um angled um uh, pieces for like a pull-up bar from titan fitness and started to play around with those and I realize if I just flip them upside down, that gives you a point where you can start from the bottom again, and then you could just pin it in with another bracket. So you can take it off, take it on whenever you want. And when you're ready to store it, you can just literally just put it up on the wall. Um, Gotcha. The last one is kind of for the tower, kind of not. It's that same slant board. I just literally cut a, a little section out of it just so the cables could run through it and then flipped it so I can put my feet against it just as a support. It's not something that's like, it was never made for that. So it's not really great, but it works good enough for right now until I come up with a better solution. Gotcha. So you basically turned a single uh, plate loaded tower into a lap pull down. um, I guess you could say low row um uh, leg curl leg extension a functional trainer a belt yeah. squat <laughs> yeah um, um and I, with the leg holder too you can do nor- um like cable supported nordics right too. right and that's and the one that i really curl. like as well cool yeah um 
do you have an estimate an estimate as to how much time you've put into this? <laughs> I have no clue. Um, it would be, I mean, it's, it's, it's something where like me and my wife went to Ireland, Scotland and we had our plane. Made. So I'm literally just sketching in a sketchbook, ah. all these different designs that I'm like cool. working on. And those are like, that's like a six and a half hour flight. So I'm just like slow, like adding more, well, let's try this. I want to do this thing. I want to do this. So it's one like I'm like, once those ideas start kind of, it's like kind of smoldering my brain, I like have to just keep going at them until like they're a thing. Yeah. And then once I actually like make something that works, depending how I like it, then I can, I'll pursue more or, or stop. What's your wife think? Oh. <laughs> she is tolerating it if that's the, the best way I could put it. Um, she likes it. She uses the gym and everything. And she's all about like not purchasing, I mean, a functional trainer, what they're like $1,500. Right. And I'm in this one for, uh, I mean, I already had the parts. So, I mean, yeah, if I count those parts, maybe $300. Okay. Um, how about like, so we'll talk about what specifically for sale, but what, what led you to like thinking, oh, this is something I can actually sell. Was it simply like people in the Instagram comments saying, oh, I would buy that or, or what was it? Yeah. So multiple people had said they're like, oh, I want to buy that. And, um, that my same buddy that I wanted, uh, that I lived with for a year, he was just like, we well, should make a business. He one kind of wants to help with businesses and everything. So he was willing to like, kind of like help me start every, everything. And right before we went to Ireland and Scotland, I decided I'm like, let me just put it on the Instagram story and like, see if anyone would be interested. And then just from an Instagram story, which I didn't have, I mean, at that point I had less than a thousand followers and I ended up getting like 20 plus messages saying I would be interested in there, asking me questions about it. And mm -hmm. then I ended up selling a couple right before we went to on our trip. And then with, we, we went with our, my same buddy. And then with more talking on the trip, he was like, we should actually do this. And actually like, he's gonna, he's, he's uh, helping too with the business and kind of starting on our own, actually creating something. And then when I get back, I was like, oh, I'll go ahead and just make a post and see how much, what other interest is out there. And it, I was like over a little overwhelmed in the beginning because it was literally like put it out there and it was like messages on messages. And that's just I'm like, I didn't even think that many people had this tower. Yeah. And uh, that was, that was actually a question I, I was curious about, like how many people even own something like this? It's gotta be mm -hmm. like, I don't know. Do you have any idea? I have no clue. I know that there's from my, different purchases. I had a bunch of people say that they haven't got the tower yet for a while. It was on back order from Belt of Steel. And yeah. They decided that this is the tower they wanted to get and they purchased, they were going to purchase this just from like seeing my attachments. I'm like, Oh, it can do, uh, it can save me all this money on lap pull down. It can save me money with uh, the fly and like all these different things. And they're seeing that and they're like kind of seeing the use that I see out of it where it's like, it's this one relatively small unit that can kind of be a jack of all trades. And, and, and whenever you're done with it, you can take those parts and hang them on the walls or out there out of the way. Yeah. Yeah. What about, uh, so what are you specifically selling? So as of right now, um, it's just the, um, lap pull down attachment at the top and then the leg holder, uh, the belt squat and the fly attachment. I will be selling. They're just not ready yet for um, kind of just, like I said, I want to see mass production, but it's, it's not mass production. It's me in my yeah. like shed in the backyard, <laughs> putting yeah. them all together the best I can. Well, that's like how Darko started. Right. Um, and it mm -hmm. seems like he's doing pretty well. Uh, do you, what are you, what are you charging for that? For those? So, um, right. I mean, the very beginning, I didn't really know I, I was charging a little less, but then I realized like, I have to buy like the boxes they need to go in. I need to get packaging. So I've had to like up it a little bit, but right now the lap pull down attachment, the one that goes on the top, 
Um, that one's going to be 220. Okay. Um, and then this includes uh, free shipping to anywhere in the continental United States. Um, so I'll work with people that are in Canada, but I mean, shipping is going to be outrageous. Mm-hmm. And then um, I had somebody interested from Hawaii and there I got, a, got them a quote and like shipping was like over, like was almost $150 just to ship it there. I'm like, they told me they'll come back. Got um, but the um, leg holder is uh, 170 and that same thing, uh, free shipping to anywhere in the continental United States. Cool. Um, so you said next up, you're going to tr- you have a few more things. Do you have a, uh, an estimate as to when those will be available? Um, the, the belt squat, I'm hoping to get ready to go a month or so. And then the fly machine will probably be, be two months. Um, there's just some things where my, the way I built mine was with uh, a CNC aluminum bracket. So with it worked with everything flies, but when we started to like really push the unit and like kind of push it to the capacity of the tower, the aluminum didn't fail, but I did not feel comfortable like sending that to people. So I just need to get, get some uh, quotes on steel and work on getting those with um, making some things with steel out of that. And, and where are you getting these parts? For which... Anything like what's the process? Do you just oh, who do you so, reach out to? So some of the stuff is I'm repurposing um, some other fitness equipment stuff that's already out there, um, like the um, the lat pull down piece. They're currently rep fitness um, leg holders or the, um, the stabilizer feet, um, and oh, then they're okay. relatively cheap. Um, I, ideally, I'm going to be I'll be working on making my own stuff, yeah. but right now it's like. I just don't have the capacity to do that. Um, and then way I'm purchasing that, it gives me two uh, stabilizer feet so I can make two lat pull down attachments with one purchase of, of a pair of stabilizer feet. Um, some of the other stuff um, like the aluminum, that's just um, just kind of like looking at the best sources on the internet. Um, some of it can be Amazon, some of it can be other um, local um, suppliers. Kind of just depends on what sales and different things are going on. Um, and some of the parts are, um, I am to kind of manufacture them myself. Um, I have like for the leg holder for, um, the ones going forward, they're going to be, uh, I'm using a, um, when it comes in, I have a CNC plasma cutter coming in that will be coming in relatively soon. That will make where I can start doing, um, cutting out parts and doing some of the bending on my own versus having to kind of modify other things that are out there. So it's just just getting those more and more tools that I need to actually be able to create these different things. Gotcha. Um, So what, and then what does your, you you mentioned you, I don't think you had too many, uh, like a workshop really um, when you first began, has that was, is that the case? And uh, what's it, what's it look like now? So in, in the very, very beginning, it was, so my house that I have currently has a two car garage, but it also has a, um, a 10 by 15 shed in the backyard that um, has power to it as well. Oh, so nice. when I first was using it, it basically was like a catch all of like what all the stuff that would have gone in the garage is in there. Um, mm-hmm. So if I wanted to build something, I would, I have had a couple of like folding tables that I'd have to take out. Um, pull the welder out and kind of do all that stuff outside of the, the shed, but using utilizing the power of the shed. Um, but I had all of like my yard work in there, all of like I had paint in there, all these other there's miscellaneous stuff that normally would kind of go into the garage or just kind of just put in there. Yeah. Um, it's kind of morphed just cause I've realized like the amount of volume and the amount of like orders I'm getting, I need to actually have a space and have a workflow where I can, kind of go in there and this is what I'm doing. Um, so I, we, I just got an, like another smaller shed that's off to the side. That's going to be all for that, all the um, other miscellaneous stuff. Um, so right now I'm the, the shed is slowly morphing into more of a workshop versus a, just a catch all for everything else I have. Um, and we're looking into getting more tools. So we'll be able to kind of like offer more, um, diverse things and be able to do more item or more um, machining on our own versus having to 
kind of modify what's out there. Very cool. Uh, what about what about some products or some ideas that you've had that you're just not quite there yet, or you've started and failed? Uh, would love to hear kind of the process, or just like uh, where you're at with some of those ideas. Yeah. So I was playing around with a um, a kind of a trolley system, um, but right now the the ability to make the wheels was something where I was 3D printing them. And once he started to push the loads, the three, they, they just started to delaminate. So it just wasn't something mm. that's gonna, was gonna work. So I've kind of put that on kind of pause for now as I kind of look at some other options of how I can get some um, kind of like some milled wheels, like more tools to buy essentially. Right, um, right. But I have, uh, the other thing too is, I don't currently have a three by three rack, um, but I do think there are some options where like, if I had a three by three rack, if I could make some items for a three by three, that would kind of open up the avenue of like, I'm getting into, uh, have the ability to get my stuff into everybody's home gym, kind of like the, the industry standard versus my two by two rack. Or I'm like, no, what, like literally nobody has this rack. I don't know. I think there's quite a bit of people that have the two by two racks still. And my, that might be a good like way to just get going. Well, my, my problem is I, the two by two rack I have is two by two with five eighths inch holes. Oh because it's yeah. A, it's I a, see it. It's, it's a, it looks different than, yeah. Yeah. It's, it's a Titan. It was, it was released in yeah. Titan and they use nine gauge steel. So it's, it's actually thicker steel than it's on like three by three racks. But because they, like the market was kind of shifting right then, they, uh, gotcha. Uh, people just kind of like gravitated away from it. And I've been assuming that it wasn't a good seller for them, which I liked it. Cause I'm like, it got me a relatively cheap rack. That's super strong, but it's still a square design versus a rectangle. Cause I didn't want to go with a, um, like the, like an R3 or a T3 cause ha not having the ability to mount on every uh, direction of your rack just, just wasn't something I did what I wanted to deal with. Got it. So you got to sell enough of these so you can buy a three by three rack and start working <laughs> on more stuff. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> All right. Last question. Um, can you tell me more about some future plans? Um, so right now um, we're working on a website. So instead of having to go through direct message through Instagram, trying to get a website all uh, sorted out, um, the company that started, it's going to, it's, um, Order Phys Ed Fitness as right now. That's kind of our name we're going with. And um, we I said, plan to get more tools. Um, we are going to be purchasing a, uh, a CNC plasma cutter. Uh, so that'll open up a bunch of options. I have a couple other things that I have to get for the, uh, the shop as well. Um, like the sandblaster and things like that. Just try to where we can be able to manipulate the steel um, without having it go without having to outsource basically. Right. Right. Cool. Uh, awesome. Well, anything else you want to chat about while you're here? Um, I, I mean, that's pretty much covered everything. I want to see what I, if I wrote down anything else. Uh, I, I can't give it away yet, but I can kind of tease a little bit what I'm the, the kind of, this is the item that I, the reason I started the business because the Bell's items, they're cool and everything, but they're limited on their ability. Right. Yeah. I'm currently working on something that could potentially be a, could take the place of about five massive machines that would go on to a single post. Um, but I don't want to give away too much because I don't want like somebody else has more resources to kind of just swoop in. Interesting. And, but there's there is something coming in the works that hopefully I will have available. Um, the and I know I I spoke to you a little bit about kind of like what was going on in my life with all the I've had a, quite a few crazy things go on um, with different people getting sick and passing yeah. away and things like that. Uh, but I am interested in kind of like looking at maybe going to Home Gym Con and getting something where I can. I, I don't know what the process is of like becoming a vendor or going as an individual, what would be best? But well, I, I'll, I'll tease this. I haven't announced it yet. Um, 
but uh, Admat Admat is doing an innovation station. So they purchased a little bit of extra space and they're going to have some sort of application for, you know, people like you who are inventing, who may have, may have like invented products, but don't have an established brand. Mm -hmm. Um, they're opening up an application for, for you to showcase some space there, uh, which would actually be no cost to you unless you wanted a, a logo on the vendor list, uh, for a small, smallish fee. Um, so, um, so yeah, that, that might be an option, um, or there's other ways to get in other booths as well. And then a secondary space. Uh, so, so I, I guess yeah, I think that's give it some time and you, you, you can decide what's best, but it's definitely yeah, some yeah, options. It can all depend on how fast everything's growing. Like right now, that sounds like the best option, but if we grow a little bit more and a little faster, as in this, if the teaching it's, as I'm a teacher in Florida and people don't really as I don't think people value it, but the amount of like financial benefit that we get to being a, being a teacher is very minimal. Like I make just a tiny bit over somebody that's a brand new, and I've been doing this for ten years. Uh, and maybe um, the difference yeah. is like I think it's like a thousand dollars difference between a ten year like in the in the, and over a thousand dollars over the course of a full year is essentially nothing. <laughs> Right. Yeah, that's nothing. Uh, well, hopefully you can, I'm, I doubt you've profited much so far, but hopefully this could be at least a nice second income for you here oh, yeah. uh, I mean, as you keep getting it, this thing rolling. Yeah. With, with everything coming in, it's, it's one of those things like we're not negative and okay. starting that's out awesome. being not negative. It is, is, that's a really good thing. Um, and if we can keep going and keep getting more door and th think like more stuff kind of pushing, pushing through, um, hopefully that'll get where we can kind of build it out. And maybe I, this will be my full-time gig eventually, but right now that's not, not the case, but we'll see right. where it goes. Hey, it's, it's good to have goals. Yeah. Um, awesome. Well, um, that's all I've got. Um, you were nice enough to, uh, do a little guest, uh, guest blog post, which I will post about the same time this podcast releases. Um, so people can check that out for, he, you mentioned, a, it's kind of probably a little bit difficult to listen to all of the items. Um, so go check that out, check out his Instagram, um, at Porter Fizz Ed. At Porter yep. underscore Fizz Ed. Yeah, there you go. Um, that'll also be in the description. Anything else you'd want to, uh, anywhere else people can find you that you'd want to mention? Um, right now, that's the only the only way that I make, the only thing I'm really pushing out there. Like, I have a Facebook, but it's, I'm hardly ever on there. Like, I, right. I go on there, like, it's essentially for Marketplace. <laughs> yes, same. But, cool. All right, man. Well, uh, appreciate you taking the time. Uh, congrats on the early success so far. Love following along. And hopefully we can do this in a year or two and check in. Oh, definitely. All right. Appreciate cool. you having me on. All right. All right. Have a good one.